We've identified a few languages that are not regular using a few different approaches. First, the language of palindromes because we can construct an arbitrarily large pairwise disjoint set. Next, the language of strings where some number of zeros is followed by the same number of ones because it fails the pumping lemma. Both of these would require an infinite number of states, so no finite automaton recognizes them. So by Clayness theorem, they can't be regular languages. But maybe finite automaton are enough. The language of palindromes and 0n, 1n are somewhat restrictive. So why should we investigate languages that aren't regular? First, eh, it beats doom scrolling. Second, it gives you a dissertation topic. And third, and probably the most important, regular languages are actually the restrictive ones. For example, let's consider a simple language, the language whose symbols are open parenthesis, zero, close parenthesis, where L is the language consisting of any number of open parentheses, followed by a zero, followed by the same number of closed parentheses. This gives us a rather boring language whose elements are mathematically valid expressions like parenthesis zero, double parenthesis zero, triple parenthesis zero, and so on. Is L regular? So a useful idea, remember, try and build your intuition. This seems similar to our two examples. Our language resembles the language of palindrome since the last part of the string is determined by the first part. And it resembles the language 0 and 1n since there must be as many closing parentheses as opening parentheses. So your intuition should suggest that this language is not regular. Now, while you should build your intuition, don't stop with it. Let's prove it. So we note that the set consisting of any number of open parentheses is a pairwise distinguishable set. It also contains an infinite number of elements, so a finite automaton recognizing it would require an infinite number of states, so it couldn't be a finite automaton, and so L isn't regular. And again, it's useful to remember, prove it again differently. So we might note that if a finite automaton recognizing L with N states existed, then n open parentheses followed by a zero followed by n close parentheses is part of our language, but we can't find a substring of the first part that can be omitted or repeated to create a string in L. And so we fail the pumping lemma. This means that we can't even find a finite automaton that recognizes simple arithmetic expressions. So let's expand our notion of a language. Let's consider that PAL, the language of palindromes, is not regular, so no finite automaton exists that recognizes it, but humans can recognize whether a string is a palindrome. So what sort of machine could recognize it? So it's useful to ask, what would humans do? Given a string, we'd recognize it as a palindrome, possibly by splitting it in the middle and seeing that the first half is the mirror of the second half. Now, to create an algorithm, let's try to reduce this to the smallest steps. So, while a human could recognize the string AAB is the mirror of BAA, we can also break this down into recognizing a single symbol, that first and last symbol. If the first and last symbol don't match, we can't have a palindrome. But if they match, we'd omit them and consider the next pair of first and last symbols. And again, if they match, we might have a palindrome, but if they don't match, we can't. And in this way, we can process a long string, and if a single first and last pair fail to match, we don't have a palindrome. This suggests a way we can recognize the language of palindromes. Imagine we have our string, but we can only see the first and last symbols, while the rest are included in a variable, which we'll call s. 
it's helpful to think about the variable s as a box. If the symbols we can read, the first and last, are the same, it's worth looking in the box. And it might contain another box. And again, if the first and last symbols are the same, we look in the box. And lather, rinse, repeat. On the other hand, if the first and last symbols ever differed, we know we don't have a palindrome. This suggests a way to process a string and check if it's in the language of palindromes. If we can write our string as ASA or BSB, where S is another string, proceed. But sooner or later we'll process the entire string. Then our final string will either be the empty string or a single symbol. If you build it, they will come. Now to get a formal definition, it helps to reverse the process. What would we need to do to create a palindrome? First, we could start with the empty string or one of our symbols. So we'll write this this way, and we could read this as S could produce one of lambda A or B. Again, if you think about this as looking in the box, it's possible that we might look in the box and find one of these three things. Next, if we have a string S that is a palindrome, we can produce a new string that's also a palindrome by appending the same symbol. We could write this as, and we'll read this as S could produce one of ASA or BSB. In other words, if we look at the box, we might find that it's an A appended and prepended to something, or a B appended and prepended. Note that we're interpreting this as this, so concatenation takes precedence over disjunction. So let's show that ABBA is in the language of palindromes using our production rules. So our initial string is the string we're processing, which isn't the empty string A or B, so we can't use that first production rule. However, our string can be written as A something a, where our variable s is bb, so we can use the production rule s produces asa. So we'll note that, and we'll record what our new definition of s is. Again, s is not the empty string a or b, but bb can be written as bs B, where our variable is the empty string, and so we can use the production rule. And finally, we note that S is now, in fact, the empty string, so we can use the production rule. And one final simplification, our string A, B, lambda, B, A is just A, B, B, A. And note that our final string is written entirely in terms of the symbols in our language. And if we don't need the details of the intervening steps, we can just write this as S produces ABBA. And this suggests a new way to define a language. And we'll take a look at that next.